Hi everybody, welcome back to Jason Morgan Wildlife Art. I'm known for doing my wildlife paintings really detailed, but over the next few days I'm hoping to paint this seascape painting in a much looser fashion. Now that can be quite difficult sometimes to imagine how loose you want it to look and how much detail you want to eliminate from the reference photo when you're painting it. Well, I found a really neat tool or filter in Photoshop CS6 I'll be using but I think it's in virtually every Photoshop and that allows you to just adjust a few sliders which will really knock the detail back to whatever level you want. So let's take a quick look and see how I do it. Okay this is that tool I found in Photoshop and it's really very simple to use. So I brought up just uh, an image that I've taken of a crashing wave and you can see it's very complicated there's lots of details especially in the sea at the background and in the rocks as well but I can simplify this really quickly by just going filter and by the way I'm using Photoshop CS6 for this so filter filter gallery and then I'll just reduce the size of the image just so you can see the full scene and then go under this this um, area artistic paint daubs and then I found a, something around about brush size 10 and also then sharpness 10 just sliding that across and you see how it dramatically reduces the amount of detail in the image but you can see the scene still looks obviously like a, a crashing wave but if I zoom in, you really see how much detail has been eliminated. There, you can see how much, much more artistically impressionistic it is, and it's re really been broken down into its um, basic elements. Look how much detail has been reduced there. But when I zoom back out, you can see how it becomes once again photorealistic when I keep zooming out. So this would give you the same impression as if you, you'd done a painting and you mounted it on a wall and then started walking back from it. Or in this case walking towards it, you could see how the detail or the illusion of detail is really um, reduced there as you see the brush strokes that's required. And that's obviously why they say to stand back a little bit from a painting. So that's it done with a seascape. So if I cancel that, you can see the detail on the um, the photograph again there. If we take a look at a, a different photograph, one from one of my wildlife reference photo CDs, and I'll do exactly the same again. So that's filter, filter gallery, and then I'll leave it zoomed in this time so we can see the adjustment as it's actually happening. Let me zoom out just slightly there so if I bring brush size up again to 10 you see the adjustment taking place there and then if I bring sharpness up to 10 and let go you can see the bar there showing as it's actually performing the task so you can really see how you could do a very impressionistic um, painting or brush strokes there and if I zoom out again, you'll see how realistic it still looks as you go back from it. See, so once again, it looks photorealistic. And zooming back in. So if you're looking at this image now, and I take brush size all the way back down, there's all that detail that you could find quite confusing and overwhelming when you're starting a painting. And I'll take it back up to 10. And that's that impressionistic look. So I'll OK that. So this is really handy if you would like to actually um, reduce the, the detail in your paintings and have a more impressionistic appearance. Or you want to start doing an underpainting that's obviously got less detail and then build the detail on top. So if you wanted to do a print out of this and actually kind of follow that on your painting so that you had a less detailed underpainting. And what I would advise then is also to actually make the image a bit darker so you can layer the details on top. 
So I'd go image, adjust, levels, and then just grab the central one, so that's the mid-tones, and then you can darken that down, and OK that. So you could see then, if I zoomed out, oh, it's a much darker image than what you would want in the end, but that would allow you to actually overlayer the lighter tones. So if I go edit undo, you see how much lighter you would want it as the final painting. So that's just a few tips with this filter, filter gallery and artistic paint daubs, which I've used to, to really reduce the detail in a painting and give a much more impressionistic appearance. Hope you found that of use. Don't forget that you can find me on my webpage jasonmorgan.co.uk where you'll find loads of videos and ebooks and reference photo CDs and, and things like that and also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Don't forget to check out my YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any new videos. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll speak to you all again real soon.